Okay. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so this meeting is to explain a continuous time Fourier series. So I uploaded the notes on module yesterday night, and I want to use this uh, lecture to explain the notes I, update, I uploaded because there is both a quiz and as an, an, an assignment uh, which you have to do based on the notes I uploaded. So let me uh, share my screen now. Okay, so um, this is a continuous time for your series. And uh, you asked to consider a continuous time signal, a periodic signal. So what's a periodic signal? A periodic signal is a signal that repeats itself after uh, a certain period, let's say t, uh, t naught. So t naught is a period Y omega naught is the frequency. So the omega naught is given by this formula. And in the second note I uploaded, um, if we represent the signal by uh, a complex exponential, E j omega naught t, then the period of the signal is also um, the same thing as which we started from together with the frequency. Then if we consider um, an exponential signal that is harmonically related, so when we say that uh, harmonically related complex exponential is just a complex exponential, then there is a k included. It has the same period as the original complex exponential, but the um, but the fundamental period is much shorter. So instead of t naught equal to two pi divided by omega, you have um, t naught divided by k equal to two pi divided by omega. So we said that this is harmonically related complex exponential. Then it's just the inclusion of k uh, inside. Then, um, so generally, we can represent a periodic signal by a linear combination of harmonically related complex exponentials. So, what is a Fourier series? Fourier series basically is when you break down the signal x of t into uh, a linear combination of complex, of harmonically related complex exponentials. So you are trying to represent the signal by a linear combination of harmonically related complex exponentials. So the reason why we want to do that is because when we're in the Fourier domain, uh, we see the frequencies and by looking at the frequencies, we're able to study the signal and analyze the signal better than when we're in the uh, in the pure time domain. So for Fourier series, we are breaking down the signal into a linear combination of harmonically related complex exponential. So this is the definition of a uh, Fourier series. So note that this is the continuous time domain. So we have the representation in discrete time domain, which we'll be doing uh, subsequently. Uh, we also have the representation for a periodic signal. So this is a continuous time Fourier series representation of a periodic signal. So we represent the signal x of t as a, a summation of k from minus infinity to plus infinity, a sub k, then the harmonically related complex exponential, why a sub k is the Fourier series coefficient. So this the, uh, is the equation for continuous time periodic uh, a signal, the Fourier series of a continuous time periodic signal. Then I already said S of K is the coefficient. Then the period 
is given by this, which is the formula you all know. Then the fundamental frequency is also given by um, this uh, formula here. So the, the first equation, this equation one, is called the complex exponential form of Fourier series. So it involves summing um, the linear combination of complex exponentials, summing from k from minus infinity to k plus infinity. So that is what it's all about. And there are different ways where you can represent the Fourier series. Uh, you can either use um, the complex exponential form, which is what I defined in equation one, or you can represent it as a summation of sines and cosines. Then I'll be proving how to represent it, though in this course, we're going to just be representing the Fourier series as summation of uh, com linear combination of complex exponentials. But I just want to prove um, the trigonometry form, how you can get the trigonometry form from the complex exponential form. So A sub k is a Fourier coefficient. Then the Fourier coefficient, if we represent it in either in polar form or in rectangular form, it becomes uh, this or this. Then if we represent uh, also the amicably related complex exponentials. So remember from the uh, week one, uh, E j theta is equal to e cos theta plus j sine theta. So it's just, if you want to get the trigonometry form, you're going to uh, arrive at this or this. So I just want to prove how from representing um, the signal as a linear combination of amicably related complex exponentials, you can uh, either get this or this, which is the same thing. So to write, to derive equation two, uh, what we simply do is that this is the equation we are starting from, then we want to derive this. And we are going to break down this, this summation into its individual terms. So k is starting from minus infinity to plus infinity. But let's start, let's start with a zero. So a zero, is something as a zero e uh, e j zero, and you know the exponential of zero is one, so that's why you just have a zero. So we start from when k is minus one and plus one. So when k is minus one, you have this one a one e j omega naught t. Then this is when this is when k is one, and this is when k is minus one. Then you move on to two. So when k is two, this is a two e j two omega naught t. And when k is minus two, you also have the corresponding form. So this is when k is minus two. And you can be, it is this to infinity. Remember the Fourier series is to infinity. So you can go on and on and on like that. Then when you looking at this. You can simply write this as a naught, so the a naught will come down here. Then the summation, you know, you are summing from infinity. You are just removing the first term, which is a naught. Is um, k uh, is minus one. K is from minus one because you've already removed the um, the first term, which is a zero. So you're starting from from k is equal to one to infinity. So the minus term is already uh, within it. So you are summing the positive k values and the negative values. Now remember in the first week, for an even function, um, for an even function, a sub k is equal to a minus k. So let me just, because I have an even function now here. So uh, this is an even function. So for an even function, this is an even function. Uh, 
the coefficients you have on the, this is the positive side and this is the negative side. So the amplitude at the positive side is the same thing with the amplitude as a negative, as, uh, on the negative side. So that's what we simply mean by A sub K and A minus K is the same thing. So if it is the same thing, we'll simply, uh, instead of putting A minus K, or instead of putting A minus one, we're just going to put A one for, for eight. Then we are going to add this two together. Uh, we'll add this two. So this one is A one and this one is A one because A sub K and A minus K, they are the same thing. Then you simply, so this A one is a like term. Then you simply add it together. Then the same thing for A two, then dot, dot, dot meaning to infinity. So that means that this equation here, it becomes this, because A sub K and A minus K, they're the same thing. So note that for an even function, we're still going to do for when it's an odd function. So we have this. So remember that um, from week one, the real part of an exponential signal is the same thing as e j theta plus e minus j theta divided by two. So when you cross multiply, you are going to get this out. So if you look at this, um, this within the bracket is in form of e j theta and e minus j theta. So instead of writing this, we are simply going to replace this with two of the real parts of the uh, complex exponential signal. So this A sub K is, would also come down here. Then uh, we say that if K can be represented in this form, so if A sub K is a complex exponential signal, so instead of A sub K here, we are going to, um, instead of A sub K, we are going to replace it with the uh, the complex exponential, then this will also come down. So when you collect the like terms, because the e, the e j theta and the e j k omega naught theta t, they are the same. The, you can collect the terms together, then you will get this form. So remember that the real part of a complex exponential signal is cos. So this is the real part. So we just bring this to outside here, is it? So this is the real part, and the real part is cos theta. So instead of writing this, we'll simply replace it with cos of what is inside this bracket. So we have been able to prove uh, the first, we have been able to prove the equation too, because we started with the, uh, we started with equation one and we're able to get equation two. Uh, this, the first equation I wanted to prove. Then to prove the second equation, and the second equation is this. So the reason is that Fourier series, continuous time Fourier series is generally represented by this. But I told you that it can also be represented by this, which we've just proved, or by this. And this is what, I want to prove next. So, so to prove that the third equation, instead of saying A sub K, for the first one we said A sub K is in a polar form. So we are going to say A sub K is in a rectangular form. So instead of writing uh, A sub K, we're going to replace it with this, so which we've done here. Then uh, we're going to expand it out. So we are going to break down, um, break this down, and expand it out so that each of them has this uh, exponential. So it becomes equation ten. Then we're going to bring in. Um, so we've expanded it out here. Then the next. Um, thing is to expand the real part. So the real part, we're going to 
include it here, then we're also going to include it here. And from your further, uh, from uh, engineering maps, the real part of an exponential uh, form of a signal is equal to cos theta, while the imaginary part is equal to sine theta. So we, this is the real part. Then we replace it with cos, cos k omega naught t. So this omega k omega t, we bring it to k omega naught t. Then this is the imaginary part, and the imaginary part is simply equal to the real part, but there is a minus. So that's where this minus comes in. So instead of uh, writing the real part, we just replace it with sine theta for the minus because the real part is the same thing as the imaginary part, just um, with a negative sign. So we've been able to prove uh, the uh, third equation. So this particular equation, this we've been able to prove this and this. So this equation simply means that we can represent any signal x of t by a linear combination of sines and cosines. We can also represent it as a linear combination of harmonically related complex exponentials, which is this. And we are going to be um, and we're going to be discussing that. Uh, we're going to be focusing on this. So it's just to when you see other textbooks and they use this or this. So you know that uh, we are also, we are doing the same thing. There's nothing different. Then, um, so we said that you can represent a, a signal X of T as um, a linear combination of complex, of harmonically, of harmonically related complex exponentials. And that equation we derived is called the Fourier series uh, synthesis equation. So now we want to go into the Fourier analysis equation. So the Fourier analysis equation is a Fourier series synthesis equation. But the Fourier analysis equation tells us how to get this A sub k, which is the Fourier series coefficient. So we want to get the Fourier series coefficient. So this is the formula we are going to use to get the Fourier series coefficient. So we are going to be uh, proving this formula uh, now. So let me just state the formula. So we said the, the Fourier series coefficient is one over T naught, where T naught is the period. Then you are integrating uh, X of T multiplied by the exponential of minus J K omega naught T. You are integrating it over one period. So you are integrating it over just T naught. So that's the, uh, the representation. So in order to prove this, so we're going to start with this. We want to prove this, but we're going to start uh, with this one. So we already know this. We already know this equation is not strange to us. And um, first of all, before we start proving, we would let's establish that the integral of this complex exponential signal over a period is t naught when m is equal to zero and is zero when m is not equal to zero. So it's uh, you can just um, you can just prove it on your own. But when let me just give an a general idea. When you replace um, when m is equal to zero. So this becomes zero. This, the, this becomes zero. Then the exponential of zero is one. So when you integrate one, you're simply going to just get t naught. So that's where the t naught comes in. Then when m is not equal to zero, so you are integrating a signal over a period. And what is integration? Integration is summing. You are summing the signal. And remember for a periodic signal, you have the negative part and the, and the positive part. So when you sum negative plus positive, it's going to be zero. So you can prove it also using the normal calculation to confirm that, um, to confirm that this is actually the case. So is this, what we've just established, 
that's what we are going to be using to prove to get to this point from here so this is another way this is another way to prove that this is correct so e j omega not t e j m omega not t when you break it down as sine and cosine it becomes this then when you integrate if m is not equal to zero then you, you do this integration you get zero but if m is equal to zero here is one this the cost part because cos zero is one so when you integrate one you get c naught but sine uh, sine zero is zero so you get zero here so uh we're just the, the one this the one i've said before is how to prove it then you can also use this to prove it that this is indeed correct so the next step is to multiply both sides of this equation by e minus j and omega naught t so when you multiply both sides of this equation this particular equation by this you're going to get um this equation so we are simply multiplying the, our original equation by this term then we're just going to interchange so this remains this doesn't change then when we interchange we we'll interchange the integral so instead of you know the summation is a summation is a so we are just moving the summation out here then we are bringing the integral forward so when we do that we get this then you combine these two exponentials together to get this then once we've gotten this we'll use the previous integral results we established before so we said that the integral of this is t naught when um uh, so let's say that m is equal to k minus m. So for we said that is equal to t naught when m is equal to zero. So when m m is equal to zero simply means that k is equal to m. Then it's t naught. Then if k is not equal to m, that's when m is not equal to zero. Uh, the integral is zero. So we've already proved this previously so what we just did is to replace k minus n with m so we arrived at this then since the integral gives us zero when k is not equal to zero and it gives us t naught when k is equal to m we uh, this result becomes um a n t naught and so uh we got this from this then we got this summation from this so since it's going to be from when k is not equal to n since it's zero so we are not bothered with this we are just bothered with when k is equal to n so this a sub k will become a sub n then we know that the value is t naught so this is where the t naught comes in so when you make a sub n or a sub k remember k is equal to n so a sub n is equal to a sub k you get this so we've been able to prove so this is what we wanted to prove and we've eventually gotten to that part and so this is the, what we wanted to prove so we're able to prove uh, this from um from this and we've already gotten to that um to that part so in summary we said that the signal x of t can be represented by a linear combination of uh, of harmonically related complex exponentials so then this is called the Fourier synthesis equation then the Fourier analysis equation is given by this and the Fourier analysis equation is just to get the value of the Fourier series coefficient. Um, this coefficient is how to get it. So all our signals, 
So giving a signal, x of t, x of t is in the time domain. So we want to uh, represent it as a Fourier series. So we're going to break down the signal. We're going to represent the signal, but we'll break it down as a linear combination of complex exponentials. And the reason why we are working with Fourier series is that in the time domain, which is x of t, it's, uh, it's limited. What we can see is limited. But in the Fourier series domain, we can actually see the frequencies and we can, uh, we can observe many interesting things based on, uh, based on Fourier series representation. So let's go to, uh, we'll be doing two examples. Uh, one for the, is a, an anti-symmetric periodic waveform and the other for a periodic waveform. So we are going to be representing the waveform as a, uh, in, in Fourier series form. And so this it is represented in the time domain now. So this is anti-symmetric. Anti-symmetric being that is an odd signal. So remember in the first, um, in the second lecture, we talked about even signals and odd uh, functions. So this is an odd function. An odd function is not, is anti-symmetric about the origin. So this is the origin. And when you, try to uh, mirror it about the origin. You see that this um, the positive side is just like the opposite of the negative side. So that's an odd signal. So this is, is and it's periodic and the period of the signal is T naught. So instead of representing it in the time domain, we want to represent it as a Fourier series um, so first of all, we have to get the Fourier series coefficient. So this is the equation we just proved. Then we need the period of integration because we'll be integrating over one period. And the period is T naught because this is one period. Then from here, the signal begins to repeat. So we can choose the period from, in this example, I'm choosing it as from, from minus T naught over two to plus T naught over two. So from here to here. So we start here, and when we get here, the signal starts repeating again. When you get here, the signal starts repeating again. You can you can choose the period of integration from zero to t naught. It's still the same thing. You can choose it from minus t naught over two to plus t naught over two, it's still the same thing. You can choose it from minus t naught to zero, it's still the same thing. So the most important thing is that you are integrating over a period. T naught. So we are choosing the period of integration from minus T naught over two to plus T naught over two. Then we're going to break this equation down into two. The reason why we are breaking it into two is because from minus T naught over two to zero, X of T is minus one. Then from zero to uh, T naught over two, X of T is one. So we need to break it down. This is when X of T is minus one here. And this is when X of T is plus one. That's from, so from minus T naught to zero, X of T is minus one. Then from zero to T naught, X of T is plus one. So from minus T naught to zero, X of T is minus one. And from uh, zero to T naught, X of T is one. So we need to break it down. If it was just one straight line, you don't need to break it down. But since you have different values of x of t at different times, you need to break it down in order to capture those times. So we've broken down the signal here. Then all we just need to do, bring out the negative side here. Then you integrate. So when you integrate this, you get this. And when you integrate this function, we get uh, this. Then the limits, then omega naught multiplied by t naught is equal to two pi. So you can just do the math because omega naught is uh, two pi over t naught. So t naught will cancel and you get two pi. So that's why you have this here. So instead of writing j, k, omega naught t naught, we just write two pi j k here. Then now we put in the limits of the integration. So here we put e exponential zero 
and exponential of zero is one. Then we put, in place of t, we put t naught over two. So we do the same thing for this. Then for the next step, we, our omega naught multiplied by t naught is, is two pi, then two pi divided by two is pi. So instead of this, we replace it with this. Then instead of this, we replace it um, with um, this. And now, after that, we just, because year and year is the same thing, so we just bring uh, the two of them together here. So you, this is this line. Then you have one plus one is two. Then minus, when you bring these two together, you get and this. Then from here, you can divide this by this, you get one. So the two here will go away. Then you divide this also by two because what you do to this side, you must also do to the other side. Then, uh, so this, uh, this equation here is familiar. So this equation is cos, so ej theta plus e minus j theta is, is a cos, is a cos function. So this becomes cos k pi. And so this is our, our final answer. So we can represent it with this or with this. And the reason why we want to represent, so in for this representation, you are just replacing this cos k pi with minus one raised to k. And the reason why we can represent it this way is because cos pi is minus one. So if you have cos k pi, it's just minus one raised to k, because um, um, the k term is just uh, is going to make it to change when you have an even function of k. So because cos is an even function, so you can either stop here or, or you can go further here. So both of these are the same thing. So this is the Fourier series coefficient when s of k is equal to is not equal to zero. So for the Fourier series coefficient, you have to we have to represent it when um, you have to represent it. Uh, we have to represent it when k is not equal to zero and when k is equal to zero, because remember from this definition. Um, this is one when k is equal to zero, and this is when k is not equal to zero. Um, so we have to, you have to break it down into, into both, into both. So for k is equal to zero, it's still, it's still the same thing we did. So this is the signal s of t. So this is the uh, equation. For, to find the Fourier series coefficient. And for k is equal to zero, this becomes zero. Then the exponential of zero is one. So you simply have x of t. Then when you integrate x of t over, um, you need to integrate x of t from uh, the period, that's minus t naught over two to plus t naught over two. So as we did for the first case, from minus t naught over two to, to zero, x of t is minus one. And from zero to t naught over two, x of t is plus one. So we have this here. Then you just perform the integration, uh, which I've done here. You see that it's zero. So when a naught is equal to, when k is equal to zero, you have zero. Then when k is not equal to zero, you have the Fourier series coefficient. So when you're solving it, you need to solve for when k is equal to zero and when k is not equal to zero. And so we arrive at this. So we, this is, was what we got. So we got this when k is not equal to zero and we got zero when k is equal to zero. So we've been able to get the Fourier series coefficient for this. So in order to break it down further, we can start plugging in the values of k, when k is equal to one, k is equal to two, 
k is equal to 3, and so on. So when k is equal to 0, so this is when k is equal to 0. You have a naught is equal to 0, so which we've already proved. Then this is for when k is equal to 1. So when k is equal to 1, uh, we simply use this equation, then we replace k with 1. So this is what I did, then get j over 2 pi. So this is when k is equal to 2. Simply putting this, simply putting 2 in place of k in this formula, then you, uh, you keep on going. This is when k is equal to 3, k is equal to 4, k is equal to 5. Then the negative, because you know the Fourier series, it involves both negative and positive coefficient. So this is negative coefficient and this is a positive coefficient. So as we did for the positive coefficients, we also need to do for uh, the negative coefficient. So this is when k is equal to minus one. k is equal to minus one. Uh, you have this, then when k is equal to minus two, you have this, then you continue when k is equal to minus three, minus four. So I just stopped at minus five. So when you plot this amplitude of a of k on a graph, uh, you would arrive at this form. So for this graph, we used, uh, we said that this as is, let it be, because uh, if you'd observe from the coefficients, most of, the, all of them have a common term of j uh, pi. So we just say that let this axis represent a k j pi, so that the coefficients will just be the um, the the values themselves. Uh, we, we, you don't need we don't need to have this j pi in the values. So when you plot it, um, the values of a sub k as a function of k. So this is when k is equal to zero. This is when k is equal to one. K is equal to two. K is equal to three. Then this is for the negative side when k is equal to uh, this is when k is equal to minus one, minus three, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five. So if you'd observe this graph, um, this plotting, you will see that is an odd harmonic. Odd harmonic meaning that odd harmonic meaning that you can is an odd harmonic, meaning that is odd. This is the origin. Then when you when you flip it about the origin, the negative side uh, is just is the minus of what is what it is on the positive side. So you have two two divided by three to divided by five. Here you have minus two minus two over three and minus two over five. So this is, by this we mean that it is odd. I remember the original signal we started with. The original signal is also odd because about this origin, the positive side is just the opposite, is the negative of what you have on the negative side. So this means that when you start with an odd function or an anti-symmetric function, the Fourier series coefficient you're going to get would also be an odd, uh, it's going to be an odd function. So I can say that this is the positive side. So the positive side is just the negative. The negative side is a, um, is a negative of what you have on the positive side. So it's an odd harmonic. Then A sub K is imaginary. So remember we are getting imaginary imaginary values as the a sub k. Then uh, is anti-symmetric. So anti-symmetric meaning that is odd, which I've already stated there. And is a sign series. So in the second lecture, we said that a sign signal is actually anti-symmetric. 
and so that's why you can only represent it with a sine series. So this is the definition of the Fourier series. Um, uh, Fourier series representation of the signal x of t Fourier series. So we've broken it down here. Yeah. So yeah, remember when we proved the first one? We proved the first one for an, as an even function. Uh, yeah, we say for an even function here. So that's why we proved it this way. So now, since we have an odd function, now it's going to be different. So for an odd function, a sub k is equal to the negative of a minus k. So what you have here is the same thing as what you have here, but just a negative is included. So since we've expanded this, um, since we've expanded the Fourier series coefficient out this way, then um, we are going to uh, inc uh, take into account the even function. So we are going to combine this and this together. So this is the combination of this. So remember that now um, this and this is equal, it's just the negative. So in place of a minus one, we put a one, but there's a negative there. So this is when k is equal to two, then dot dot dot, since it's an infinite, uh, since it's an infinite series. So we represent this, since it's an odd function, we represent it this way. Then this general representation can be represented by this. So you bring out the, when k is equal to zero, then the others are just the same thing, a sub k. So we just represent, instead of this, there is something to infinity. We start from one. So you're starting from one, then we sum to infinity. So we don't need to put this dot, dot, dot. Then remember that the imaginary part of an exponential signal is given by this formula. Then when you cross multiply, you're going to get this. So that means that we can simply replace this with this uh, with this um, with this function, so we replace J two imaginary with um, the imaginary part of the exponential function. Then we know that the imaginary part of an exponential function is equal to sine theta. The real part is equal to cos theta. So instead of uh, this, we replace it with sine k omega naught t. So that's how you have this. So first of all, we got the Fourier series coefficient for this function. We are still on this question. So first of all, we got the Fourier series coefficient as this. Then we made a plot of this. Then we discovered it's an odd function. Then since we already have the Fourier series coefficient a sub k, so we can represent that periodic signal as a as this um, particular sine function here. Yeah. So a naught is zero. So since a naught is zero, because we got a naught as zero, so our a naught we got it as zero here. We got it as zero. So we can simply say that um, we can simply just represent it by since it not is zero. So this is our periodic antisymmetric uh, waveform can be represented in Fourier form by this formula where a sub k is a Fourier series coefficient, which we already got previously. So let's go to the second example, which is example two. So we want to determine the Fourier series coefficient for a periodic symmetric wave. So this is symmetric. So about the origin, what you have on this side is the same thing as what you have on this side. So the, the amplitude on both sides, negative and positive, is the same thing. Then we want to get the Fourier series coefficient, A sub K. And um, so remember, like we did in the previous case, um, this we need to get a period of integration because we are integrating over a period. Then 
um, we can choose the period from anything. So the period is T naught. So we can choose it from zero to T naught. Because after this point, it keeps repeating. You can choose it from minus T naught over two to plus T naught over two. But in this case, I'm going to be choosing it from minus T naught over four to three T naught divided by four. And the reason why I'm choosing it that way is because this is minus T naught over four. From minus T naught over four, to um so from minus t naught over four to plus t naught over four so from minus t naught over four to plus t naught over four which is a is one it has a value of one then from t naught over four which is a to um three t naught over four which is a it has a value of zero so the period of integration, you, when you're breaking it down, you break it down to the part that has one and the part that has zero or the negative side. So that's why we decided to uh, choose it that way. So you cannot choose it from, in this case, from minus t naught over two to plus t naught over two, what we did previously, because uh, it's, it's going to be difficult to break down because from here, it has zero, it has one, it has zero. So if you want to choose it from minus t naught over two to plus t naught over two, you, you break it down into three parts because from here to here, you have zero. From here to here, you have one. From here to here, you have zero. It's still the same period of integration, but I decided to choose it uh, from minus t naught over four to plus three t naught over four, um, which is A because here is one and here is zero. So I just want to break it down to two. But if you choose it from here to here, you have to break this signal down, this X of C down to three. Zero years, one year, zero year. If you choose it from A, from zero to T naught, you have to break it into four parts because you have one year, you have zero year. Okay, you have to break it down to three, sorry. You have one year, you have zero year, you have one year. So it's because I wanted to break it down into two. That's why I chose it. So from here to from t naught minus t naught over four to plus t naught over, two, over four, you have one. Then from plus t naught over four to three t naught over four, you have zero. So since this is zero, so this cancels out. So we're just going to focus on this because all of this will give you zero. Then you you integrate you integrate this function then you get this then omega naught multiplied by t naught we give you this then you can just follow through the mathematics and you're going to substitute the values of instead of t you replace it with the limit then we are going to arrive at this then when you bring this to inside you arrive at this function then from your trigonometry, uh, this function is sine theta. So instead of this, we can just replace it with sine k pi over two. So that's where we have um, this. So this is our for your series questions, when k is not equal to zero. So for when k is equal to zero, we have to do the same thing. So we're going to replace k with zero. So this becomes one, exponential of zero is one. So you have this, then if you integrate one, uh, it's just what we did similarly, but now we don't have the exponentials. So you can follow through the mathematics, then you get half. So in this case, the Fourier series coefficient, well, for when k is not equal to zero, is this, which was what we've gotten. Then it is one when k is equal to zero. So note that for your Fourier series coefficient, you need to get for when k is equal to zero and when k is not equal to zero. So we prove this, a naught is equal to half. Then here, this is when k is equal to one. So when k is equal to one, you simply substitute one into this and get this. And this is when k is equal to two, uh, k is equal to three, k is equal to four, 
k is equal to 5. So you can continue by stop that k is equal to 5. Then you have to do the negative side. So this is k is equal to minus 1. Uh, this is a coefficient. This is when k is equal to minus 2. So this is the coefficient. Is So you do the, you follow through the mathematics. So similar to what we did in example 1, you plot the Fourier series coefficient and you make the axis to be pi a k so that the coefficient is just going to be uh, numbers. So you don't have the pi there. So when you observe this Fourier series coefficient, we say that it's an even function. So about the origin, what you have in this part is the same thing as what you have in the negative part. So it's even, then a of k is real. It doesn't have imaginary j term and it's um, symmetric. So symmetric, a symmetric signal is an even signal. And we established that an even signal is, is, um, is a cosine series. So simply, we simply expanded this out. So for an even function, we've already proved this uh, when we started. So for an even function, a sub k is equal to a minus k. So instead of, so you just combine this together and replace a1, uh, a minus 1 with a1. So this is what we did here. We are summing to infinity. So instead of writing this dot, 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 we sum to infinity, then we express it more generally, which is given by this. Then from your trigonometry, the real part is given by this function. So when you cross multiply, two real is given by this. So instead of writing this, we replace it with two real of e, j, k, omega, naught, t. Then when you, uh, the real part is equal to cos. So the real part of this, so we just say that it's cos k omega naught t. So that's how we get this. So um, in this class, we're able to um, we're able to uh, um, we're able to do a lot of uh, proving, and we're able to say that you can represent a periodic signal as a linear combination of harmonically related um, complex exponentials. So complex exponentials are a combination of sines and cosines. So you can also similarly represent it as a linear combination of sines and cosines. So we got the Fourier, we got the Fourier uh, synthesis equation and we got the Fourier analysis equation. So um, thank you. So this is the end of uh, the Fourier series continuous time. So like I told you, you have it in the time domain. Uh, you have, this is the, for the continuous time. So the Fourier series representation is different in the discrete time domain. And it's also different for periodic and aperiodic uh, signals. So this is continuous time periodic signals. So in the next class, we are going to be doing continuous time aperiodic signals. And after that, we'll be focusing on um, discrete time periodic signals. That's the Fourier representation. Then after that, this, we'll focus on discrete time and uh, anti uh, periodic signals. Then, um, so we're going to be, I'll just be taking you on Fourier analysis. So thank you. Uh, I've recorded this uh, lecture. Then I'm going to be uploading it on um, or module, uh, I'm going to be uploading it so that you're going to be able to understand for those of, of you that do not participate in the meeting. Then before that, I will just, uh, I will go to MATLAB. I want to explain to you how you can represent, um, how you can represent a, uh, a periodic, a square wave, as a linear combination of sines and cosines. So this is our function. So, so when you plot it, I, you're simply plotting sine t. So when you plot uh, sine t, 
we are going to get the sine wave as you can see so now i'm going to i'm going to now i'm including this k is equal to one to k is equal to nine so when i plot it now when i plot this you can see is becoming more and more like a it's becoming more and more like a square wave then uh, let me just um let me give another plot which is this then from this plot you can see that by representing you can represent any signal so we started with a square wave then a square wave can be expressed at any signal at all can be expressed as a linear combination of sines and cosines so by just breaking down the signal as a sine signal you can actually get the original signal so that's the basic idea behind Fourier series that uh, when you have a signal so this is the basic idea behind uh, Fourier series that when you have a signal um, be it square or anything you can it can be expressed as a linear combination of as complex exponentials or linear combinations of sines and cosines. So thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for the class. Um, thank you.